told your friend you're not okay And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey Cause you fade away, Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up on my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm so <laughs> Can I ask a real quick question? Do you know what's gonna happen to your soul when you die? Where are you gonna go when you die? When I die? Very good question. So, I'm not technically religious. Okay, but, but you're still gonna die. Yeah, I believe in a higher power though. Okay. It's just, I don't know exactly who it is yet. Like, Would I've you? gone to church mm -hmm. before, I've tried to answer Jesus, and mm -hmm. in my mind, it didn't feel like I was getting answered. I know it takes time, mm -hmm. but at that time, I was at my, I was at my lowest, and I didn't know what to do. Do you mind if I maybe answer some of your questions? Because that's what I do. Okay. So you believe this higher power exists? Mm -hmm. And do you believe this higher power cares about good and evil? Yes. Are you a good person? I would say right in the middle. Right in the middle? Let, let's. Because I do do some okay. thinkable things. But then yet again, I know in my mind that I knew it was, it was dumb. Right. Another way of saying it is it was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I knew it was wrong, but for some reason my body in my mind said, just do it. You know what that's called? Sin. It's your flesh. Right? Um, let's, see if, let's see how good you really are based on your own standards. I don't know you. I'm not going to judge you, right? Have you ever told a lie? Yes. What do you call people who tell lies? So what are you? A liar. Have you ever taken something that doesn't belong to you? No. Not even candy when you were younger? No. Okay, let's say you haven't done that. Have, have your parents ever punished you for anything, ever? Yeah. That means you haven't always honored your father and your mother. Have you ever looked at a, a person with sexual desire, somebody who's not your, your wife? Jesus, who is God, said, if you look at someone to lust after them, you've already committed adultery with that person in your heart. So by your admission, you're, you're slightly better than me based on those questions. You're a liar. Maybe you're not a thief. I am. You're disobedient and rebellious. And you are an adulterer at heart. Is that the definition of a good person? Probably not. No. And if you died today and God judged you, would you be innocent or guilty? Guilty. Should God let guilty people into heaven? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So you're in trouble, right? I'm in trouble. But God loves you. You know that. What did God do for you 2,000 years ago to make sure that you have an opportunity to go to heaven? He died for us. And then did he stay dead? He rose on the third day, right? So do you know why he did that? Why, do, why did it have to be that way? I don't know, sir. Because God has to punish every sin. And he has two options either punish you for your sins or punish Jesus instead of you for your sins. If God is able to punish Jesus in place of you, then he can offer you mercy. Okay? I see that smile on your face. You get it. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? So Jesus died so that you can go free. Mm -hmm. But you don't automatically go free. You have to respond to what he did. Do you know what you have to do on your part? Ask for forgiveness. You're almost there. You've got half or less than half. Here's what Jesus said. For God so loved the world. You know what? What's your first name? I'm going to put your name in John Price. 3. Price? For God so loved Price that he gave Jesus. If Price would put his faith in Jesus, he won't have to go to hell but go to heaven. 
I told you how to go to heaven. Tell me how to go to heaven. You gotta put your faith in Jesus. You have to believe in Jesus because Jesus is God. Can you believe in a God you don't make any attempt at obeying? No. No. So it's repent and believe in Jesus. And continue repenting as God shows you, okay? Now, does that make sense to you? Yeah. Do you believe this gospel message from the Bible I just shared with you? Yeah. Are you ready to follow Jesus right here, right now, especially after seeing what happened to that gentleman? Yeah. I'm going to ask you four questions and then pray for you. Is that okay? Yeah. Do you acknowledge that you broke God's law and deserve to be punished? Yeah. Do you believe Jesus died for your, your sins on the cross? Yeah. Do you believe He rose on the third day? Yeah. Do you commit to obey and believe in Jesus for the rest of eternity? Yeah. Let me pray for you, Price. Heavenly Father, Lord, would you please receive Price into your kingdom? Would you please save him by the power of Jesus' blood, by the gospel? And fill him with your Holy Spirit so he can obey. Continue to grow him in holiness. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Price. I don't have the power to save you. Jesus does. My prayers have no power, but God has power. And if in that moment you've made a commitment to obey and trust in Jesus, you are saved. All your sins, past, present, and future are forgiven. And let's say 10 years in the future, you look back at this moment. Here's how you'll know whether you truly were saved. Only two things. One, you continue to believe that Jesus died for you and rose again. Two, you continue to grow in holiness. You become more and more like Jesus. If you, if you can look back in the future and you can see your life is following that pattern, growing in holiness, continuing to believe what Jesus did for you, then you're saved. Do you live around here? Yeah. What, what city do you live in? I live in Redondo. I live off Juanita, so okay. four or five blocks away. So let me give you a few suggestions, okay? Because I don't want you to just continue living your life exactly the way it is, right? And thinking just because you, you did this, you're good, right? And maybe you are good, but God calls you to something new. Number one, start reading your Bible. Number two, obey it. Number I've actually read the Bible. Keep reading it because you're going to find new stuff every time you go through it. Keep reading your Bible, obey it, and pray. Read, pray, and obey. Read, pray, and obey. Repeat and rinse, okay? Number two, find a good church, a, a Christian church that seriously teaches and practices the Bible. That again, start over? So, I started reading the Bible when I got incarcerated. Mm -hmm. I did something very stupid when I was young. In my mind, I thought it was was needed. Mm -hmm. My sister got abused by her boyfriend, and I tried to call the police to get involved, but the police wouldn't do anything. I'm not from California, I'm from Texas. We usually mm -hmm. take care of our own problems in the first place. Mm -hmm. The police is calling the last resort, like mm -hmm. you're really in the deepest amount of trouble. Mm -hmm. So after calling the police and saying, hey, yeah, I have a problem. My sister is getting abused, has has the marks to prove it, and is willing to admit it. They said, well, we couldn't do anything unless she called. And I said, well, she's scared to call. Her boyfriend's abusing her. And they said, well, we can't do anything till we get a call. So, and I took it into my own hands. Mm -hmm. I regret doing what I do. I completely regret it because my life could have changed for the better good of what, what I did to him. Right. I don't want to get into full details, but I pulled a firearm out on him. Mm -hmm. And two got let off. I was, just, I was so mad. Like, at, at that point, I wasn't thinking. It was all of, the cops won't handle it, how am I supposed to handle it? The cops, yeah, they'll handle it a lot better than what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. was, I wanted to try to talk to him, but he didn't want to talk. He wanted to fight me. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't trying to fight. So when he hit me, I pulled out my firearm. And I still got incarcerated for, mm -hmm. for shooting him. But what saved me is... In California, I guess there's a law, if you shoot below the waist, it's not attempted murder. Really? I didn't know that. This happened in California? Yeah. Okay. I got charged with an aggravated assault and assault with deadly weapon. Did he, did he live, the, the boyfriend? Yeah, he lived. Okay. 
but after I did it is when all regret came in. I'm like, mm-hmm. I just, I, I just, I just shot someone. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what the hell? Like, what am I supposed to do? I, I'm the one that made the police report because I knew leaving the scene, trying to do all that would just make it worse. Mm-hmm. So I had to report myself that I got, in, I got into an altercation with a firearm. Mm-hmm. That saved me a lot. Because you called I, them and I you admitted it. I stayed on scene and I didn't try to flee. I showed them my firearm. I didn't mm-hmm. try to resist. Right. But I still got charged three years, which yeah, I took full responsibility of. He didn't necessarily deserve it. But at that time, in my mind, I thought he did. Mm-hmm. When I got incarcerated, it was you really only had three things to do. Stay in your, stay in your room all day, read. Or basically do nothing. You're sleeping the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. I decided to start reading. And you don't have really much of a choice of when you're incarcerated of books you would like to read. Mm. So Bible was my first choice. I knew there was good good stories in there, good things. In three years, I read the Bible probably twice. Excellent. From front to back. Just because I didn't have nothing else to do. And it, it helped me. Is then I would get to an altercation and I would I would I would say a scripture from the Bible mm. and people that were supposed to be religious going to church on Sundays they would stop because I wasn't in my mind I thought I was atheist I didn't believe in that it was till I read the Bible till I'm like okay there is a higher power in my mind I didn't know who it was yet mm-hmm. and that was my problem I'm like okay I believe there's someone I just don't know who. Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, I feel like I'm talking to God sometimes because I do pray. Just sometimes it's difficult. Yeah. Because when you really don't know who the power is, it feels like you're talking to yourself. But now that I believe that there's some power, it's a lot easier to pray and just talk and ask for forgiveness. That's a powerful story. How, how much time did you do? I did three years. You did the whole three years? Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought they would have given you like half time or something. Okay. No, I, wasn't, I wasn't eligible for, for parole, so I had to do the whole three years. Mm. I was lucky it was just three years because I've seen cases like that. You get 20 years just for yeah, shooting someone. Absolutely. I was lucky that I, I haven't had any previous charges. It was still a juvenile. Okay. That's why they gave you three years. Yeah. Were you in with the adults? No, unfortunately. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Thank everyone. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. Because I know at my age, I was 15 and I was little. You were only 15 when you did this. Okay. I, I regretted it. That's a, it. I can understand that. Because that, that could have been my whole life taken from me. At 15, I would have been in jail for the rest of my life. Yeah, and who knows what could have happened to you in jail. Exactly. Very but bad things happen in a, jail. Jail isn't the place that... Uh, the t- TVs tend to make it a lot worse than what it really is, but that stuff still does happen. It right, isn't happening every day like how mm-hmm. old. Like when you're watching the TV, you're watching cops. Oh, there's always a police chase. There's always this. Right. It's not always like that. And, and your experience with jail is not adult jail. No. Right. It could be even I don't much want to worse. Go to adult jail. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I've had family that's still incarcerated in adult jail. Oh prison. goodness. What they did, yeah. I didn't grow up the best way. So the way I did come up, it was it was hard for me to try to live on the straight line of type of life. Because most of my family was incarcerated. My mom and dad were in and out of prison. Mm. So it was more of, I'm living with my grandma. Okay, you're going with your uncles for a couple months. Until they got out. My dad was the one that was more of the parent when he was not out. My mom was very abusive. So we got taken away from my mom mm. and we got, my dad got full custody. That's what made my dad change his life. To take care of you guys. Yeah. Okay. My dad was a drug dealer. My dad was doing drugs. My dad was, he was not living the best healthy of life. Mm-hmm. And I think him getting full custody is what actually saved him. Because I think to this day, if he didn't have his kids, my dad probably would have been dead or incarcerated. You were saying how... You pray to God, but you don't feel like he answers. But do you think maybe he's answering you in circumstances? How 
your dad getting full custody of you and your sister saved him? Maybe that was an answer to prayer. And I'm just thinking, a few minutes ago there was a man lying on the ground, possibly dead or dying, and you're standing there watching, and, I'm, and I see you come and talk to you. Maybe this right here, right now, is an answer to prayer. Price, if you're interested, I, I can meet with you on a regular basis and teach you what I know about the Bible. Would you like to do that? Actually, yeah. It'd okay. It probably help me a lot. Yeah. Because I don't, I still got, I got problems of my own right now that I'm dealing with. I'm borderline homeless right now, so mm -hmm. I'm doing everything I can possible to figure out how to make money. I'm working three jobs right now. Okay. Like, I only have, today is my only day off. And usually I'm still working today. I'm working Monday through Saturday. Okay. Most of the time, even sometimes Sunday. Because I need the money. I don't. I get it. I don't really have a choice. It's pay rent. So, what's your living situation? You're renting a, a room, an apartment. An apartment, but okay. I got kind of a slum landlord. Mm. Like my heater isn't working. Mm. It hasn't been working for the last three weeks. Okay. That's one of my reasons why I won't give him my rent. Because mm. even in my agreement it says all the stuff has to be in working order. Okay. It isn't in working order. So and that that did get him mad mm -hmm. because I can kind of understand. Well, he owns the property too. Yeah. So he he he's the owner and the manager. Yeah. He he can get. I can see how he's getting upset. But I'm following my contract. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to pay you unless my stuff is fixed. But now he's, I guess, figured out the loophole and already sent me an eviction notice. Mm. So now I have, by the end of this week, to figure out how to get three grand. Wow, is that how much you owe in rent? Oh, goodness. Okay. I know I can get three grand. It's just probably not that fast. Mm-hmm. Like, right now, I only have maybe 1500 saved up. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping to actually work today because that would have been another $500. That would have been, that would have helped. Right. Now, knowing that I actually don't work today kind of got me irritated because I'm like, well, there goes, that's a day I don't have, I can't be paying rent. Mm -hmm. it, it's difficult with my living decision, decision right now. Like, I don't got a car. I don't got a driver's license. I got my driver's license for my permit taken away at 16 because I thought I was going to be smart and drive drunk. Oh. I was lucky they didn't they didn't DUI me. They just took my permit away and I can't drive legally till I'm 21 now. But you had your shooting incident at 15. So you hadn't been jailed yet at this time. Mm -mm. You were still going through the process. Still court and all that. And you, you were still driving drunk at 16. Yeah. Stupid. Stupidest thing I've ever done. Yeah, I didn't crash, but... When I got pulled over, I knew like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm not, go I'm just gonna tell him, yeah, I've been drinking, and just tell him the truth. Mm -hmm. Me telling him the truth is actually what, honestly, saved me from getting arrested that night and charged with DUI. Yeah. He just, he said, he basically was like, he basically give me your permit, and voided the, my, voided my permit. Okay. And I got, I got a notification in the mail a couple weeks later that I can't get my driver's license until I'm legally 21. Think about this. When they sentenced you for the shooting when you were 15, if there was a DUI on your record... I, I would have been charged the whole... They might have given you a longer sentence. Yeah. The truth shall set you free. It reduced your sentence in this case. Yeah. Very, very uh, good, too. I was, I was at that point of like, I got depressed. I'm like, well, it looks like I'm going to die in jail. But it didn't happen. Yeah. God was with you. When I went to court and when the judge told me, he's like, what saved you, Mr. McClooney, is that you have nothing on your record. Oh, wow. Including the DUI that you avoided by telling the truth and the cop giving you mercy. Do you know why that cop decided to let you go for telling the truth because they get lied to all the time they're sick of it and since you were a breath of fresh air they said I'll let this guy go God was involved in that too 
Yeah. I was lucky he didn't tow my car. He just told me walk home, park, park your car. He was very merciful to you. He didn't put it into your record. No. He, he literally just he told the DMV that that he got that I basically got pulled over. But he, I guess he didn't probably tell him exactly what I got pulled over for because I probably would have never been able to get my driver's license. Yep. I have one more year till I can get my driver's license. I'm okay. Taking full advantage of it. And there, that opens up a whole bunch of options. You can do DoorDash, Uber. Lift. Because out of, out of all things, I have a boating license before I even had a driver's license. Right. Like, I can drive 150 ton boats, but I can't <laughs> drive a freaking car. Wow. Bryce, thanks for talking to me. I'm going to shut off the camera. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same.